Good morning, everybody. It's actually afternoon here in uh, Okinawa. I was busy this morning, so I had to record in the afternoon. So it's kind of weird, but I had to, you know, keep the grind going. Got to get on the grind. So today we're going to talk about dividend growth investing, specifically the magic of dividend growth investing. Why it's important, vital that we all have dividend growth investing portfolios. Yes, they're different. Dividend growth investing is different than income investing and uh, index fund investing. All right. So it's a little different and we'll go over that slightly. All right. But today we, I want to focus on the importance or the magic of dividend growth investing. Uh, there's four key reasons. OK, so before we go into that, the overarching thing of dividend growth investing, the overarching magic is simplicity. OK, you're going to pick 10 to 20 blue chip stocks which I have a list of my favorite blue chips that I'll, I'll put in the description. Uh, so blue chip stocks are big companies that have been paying dividends for 10 to 50 years straight and even in increasing their dividend for that long, okay, through thick and thin. All right, so companies like McDonald's, Procter Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Microsoft is getting up there, Apple's getting up there. All right, so these are big companies. So you're not guessing, all right, these are all, you're not shooting for a growth stock. These are companies that you know, Walmart, these are companies you know you're going to see. And so the simplicity is you pick these 5 to 10 to 20 stocks and you basically just put money on them every week and let the magic happen. There's nothing to guess about. Every once in a while, maybe one of those companies goes down, splits off, combines. But for the most part, you just put your money in and it's as boring as can be. And I'll tell you what you get at the end of that. Okay, So the four reasons that dividend growth investing is magical are what? Capital appreciation, okay? That means the stock price is going up. Dividend reinvesting. So every three months, these companies pay dividends. It goes right back into your cash pile, right? So you buy more shares with that. Dividend growth. So that's the actual dividend that the company pays. It goes up over time as well. And dollar cost averaging. Again, dollar cost averaging is consistently putting money weekly or monthly in the same uh, shares, same stocks over and over and over again. All right, so I wanna break those four down. Okay, again, over the top, they are capital appreciation, dividend reinvestment, dividend growth, and dollar cost averaging. Okay, yeah, I wish I had fancy overlays, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> again, so my plan for YouTube is to get started over the next two to three years, put the videos up, ensure that everybody kind of has access to the the, the free books and everything, information. And then maybe when I retire from the Marine Corps, I can really kind of get into it, all right? So bear with me for the next two to three years. <laughs> okay, capital appreciation. That is the price of your stock going up. Okay, these, these stocks don't shoot up. They slowly just go and kind of grow with inflation. And they, uh, for instance, I did an article today that's not up yet. Um, and I was talking about Abby. Abby is uh, a pharmaceutical company, all right? They own Hemera, the, the patent for Hemera. So I bought them at $65 three years ago. Now they're at, I think, $150, okay? So it's happening very slow. You don't even notice it going up. I actually was looking back and I was like, wow, the price doubled, right? So you don't even actually have, it's going so slow that you're not even really noticing, okay? So you buy these shares and you slowly dollar cross averaging but over time, the, the stock price is going up, all right? So your cash pile, your money that you're looking at is actually going up. Okay. Now, dividend reinvestment. So every week you're putting money in there. Every month you're putting money in there. On top of that, every quarter, right, your dividend is coming out. Okay. So say McDonald's pay you $50 for your shares. Okay. That $50 is going to go right back into your McDonald's shares. Okay. So it might buy, you know, 0.3 shares. Right, depending on the stock. Some stocks have low share prices, some have high. Okay, a high share price doesn't necessarily mean that that stock is super important. Okay, uh, over time, companies start doing stock splits. And so, what used to be a thousand dollar share is now a hundred dollars. Okay, so like Walmart is worth a hundred and sixty dollars, but they've already done like three, four stock splits. Okay, so don't necessarily look, well, this one's a thousand, this one's a hundred. It depends on how many shares are out there, okay? So don't get consumed with that. But anyway, so dividend reinvestment. So so say you're investing every month. So that's 12 times a month you're putting money in. 
But at the same time, now that your dividends are reinvesting as well, that's another four times. So that's 16 times that you've put money into that stock. Okay. So you can see over time how that repetition is going to add up. Okay. So that was dividend reinvestment. Okay. Pillar number four, dividend growth. Now, you can find these companies called Dividend Kings, Dividend Aristocrats. All right. And they look, so the, you earn that title by increasing your dividend over the years, right? Either 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Okay. So what that means is, say you buy McDonald's and say it's a $10 stock and they pay, uh, let's just say, let's say a $100 stock and they pay a $5 dividend. All right. That's 5%. Okay. McDonald's doesn't pay that high a dividend. But so $100 stock. $5 dividend. The next year, it might be a $100 stock or $105 stock, but they might increase the dividend to like $520. All right. You're like, oh, that's not much money. Over time, it's a huge amount. So you had to look at that percentage, whatever that percentage was from $5 to $520. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. That's to say it's like 7%, 8%. It's huge. Over time, that little amount is keeping up with inflation or at least, you know, helping you keep up with inflation and when you when you're buying more shares when your shares are going up in value and when there's those dividend growth increases are happening you know it, it, it is it becomes magical it's called compounding all right all these things are happening at once so say you have 100 shares of something and it's paying you 50 dollars right and then you know the next year it's paying you 55 dollars you might not notice it but it's huge and over 30 40 years you know, those, those little increases are huge. So if you look back at a company like Walmart or, or any of them and see where they started with a three cents dividend and now they're paying a dollar fifty or whatever the case may be. So though that is another thing and that's free money for you. Think about it. You bought a stock for a reason and you just let it alone. You kind of put in money into it and then they raise their dividend. That's basically a pay increase for you. All right. So if you go on Seeking Alpha the website they'll tell you they'll announce whenever people increase their dividends it's like people get excited they're like oh i got a pay raise right so uh that's dividend growth okay so that's the actual dividend amount that the company's paying you is actually increasing over time as well okay and then finally dollar cost averaging all right dollar cost averaging is putting in money every single week or every single month the same amount of money into the same stocks over and over again okay what that does over time is you're going to buy more when the stock is cheaper all right and you can buy less when it's uh more expensive all right so you just do that okay so over time you should be buying more uh you should have bigger shares at a cheaper price okay so you come out ahead for the most part all, all the time right it's just science math whatever you want to call it okay so dollar cost averaging now i use a lot of programs dollar different apps that dollar cost average for me i like stash Okay, so I have my 20 different stocks. Okay, and what I'll do is, sorry, I wasn't ready for this. I'm going to pull up my stash. I can read off what I have in my dividend growth portfolio. Okay, that way I can just go right down the list and you can see exactly what I have. Again, one day I'll be screen sharing. Not there yet. Okay, so right off the top, I have AGNIC. Okay, AGNIC. That's my, uh, my RET, my mortgage RET. Okay. Then I have NLY, which is my another mortgage rent. Philip Morrison, tobacco, okay. Uh, VTI, which is my index fund, my favorite index fund, okay. Prudential, which is insurance. Alteria, which is tobacco. AT&T, which is one of my favorite stocks, okay. They're going to cut their dividend this week. Um, bonds, a bond funds. McDonald's, Ally Bank, which is a new one, okay. So, which is a new popular bank. Microsoft, Pfizer, which is doing really well because of the, the vaccine. Procter Gamble, another bond fund. Verizon, uh, Vector Group, which is tobacco. T. Rowe, which is um, mutual funds and uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, Al Rock, which is a business development company. And that's it. Okay, and I have uh, land, which is a farmland. Okay, so then right on stash, it tells me how much every week I'm putting in. Most of the time, most of them are $2 a week and a couple of them are $5 a week. All right. And it just is early. So it's not all those little, um, that's the thing I like about stash. So say I have like 20 stocks there, 20, 25 stocks. They don't take out 20, 25, like little $2 increments. They lump it all together and it tells me, 
hey, uh, every week you're putting in $55, right? So it just takes $55 out of my primary account and then it, it shuffles it everywhere it needs to go, okay? So that's why I like Stash. And if I want, if, if there's a good day somewhere, then I could just literally just say, hey, I wanna put $100 on that stock because it's down, right? So I have the option to buy as will, willy-nilly, but I also have the option to uh, dollar cost average in, all right? And so overall, my portfolio, we've been hit hard this last couple of weeks, but I'm still up 17%, all right? And we got hit pretty hard, but since I've been dollar cost averaging, right, and not trying to make major moves, I mean, I, I was up like 25, 30% earlier, but we got hit hard because of the, um, the interest rates are going up. But um, yeah, I recommend Stash to get started. And you don't have to start with much. If you could put a dollar a week on 10 stocks, $10 a week, I mean, I'm telling you. And you'll start seeing like little dividends, like little 25 cent dividends. You won't think much of them. You do that for a year, you'll start having a dollar, $2 dividends. And then you say, oh, then you start kind of like, oh, okay, let me, let me try this. Let me put, you know, <clears throat> $20 a weekend, $30 a weekend. I mean, I started $40 a week and now I'm total between all my different stash apps is like a hundred and sixty dollars or something like that, right? Because I have different portfolios and different things in there. So, it, I mean, it's very addicting, right? And then your cash and then your your overall income uh, starts going up too, right? Your dividends per, per month starts going up too and all those are going back in, all right? So, it's just everything's feeding in. Okay, now, why is dividend growth investing important? Okay, so right now I'm in the building phase. I'm building, all right, everything's growing. I'm, I'm dollar cost averaging. But one day, right, I might continue to dollar cost average into it, but I'll turn off dividend reinvestment, okay? So let's say that I've been working all, working hard. I get, let's say I get, you know, $500,000 into my account and it's paying me 20,000 a year. I turn off dividend reinvestment, and there you go. Now I have that twenty thousand coming in. Okay, my stocks are continuing to grow, right? Uh, I can still dollar cost average into it if I want, but I don't even have to do that if I'm retired, right? I, I just let it sit. I literally just let it sit. And then the other three things. Sorry, I got something in my. The other three things keep happening: capital appreciation, right? Dividend growth. Okay, those two things keep happening. And so every year, even though I'm not reinvesting or doing anything else, my um, uh, the companies are still raising the money. So my money is still going up because the companies are raising the rates and my share prices are still going up because the companies are doing well. Okay, so that's the dream. So dividend growth investing is good for generational wealth. Okay, imagine if your family had bought Microsoft. They're at the same point I am right now and they were buying Microsoft when it was a young company. And now they're like, oh, okay, hey, we're going to toss you Microsoft. Here's, you know, 5,000 shares of Microsoft. Okay. So that's the thing. Like McDonald's might not be around in 30 years. Okay. But it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. If something happens to McDonald's, I just pluck it out, pluck, put something else in, the new hotness in. Okay. So it's no guarantee that you're going to have all these same stocks over here for 30 years, but they're not all going to die in one year. All right. They might die five years apart from each other. As long as you're following the market, seeing what's up, you're like, okay, McDonald's is cutting their dividend. McDonald's is, you know, slowing down. McDonald's isn't, share price is going down. Let me get out early. All right, you you should be ahead, right? You should be ahead of your money. Okay, cool. Boom, you just wipe McDonald's out, put in Chipotle, whatever it is. Okay, you put that in there, start the same process, okay? So yes, your, your companies might change over time slowly, but, Again, you're going to have that money there to continue going. And you really only need one company, to be honest with you. You really only need one company to do really well, right? Think about people that bought Apple at like $5 the first time. They've already done three or four stock splits. They're millionaires, okay? You don't need these, you don't need all your companies to be super over the top, okay? You don't need to micromanage and do, it only takes one success, right? Like Home Depot has done really well. They're great. Home Depot and Lowe's are great dividend stocks, okay? So if you were to put $200 in those and, you know, dollar cost average $5 a week, you have tons of money, okay? So don't get too caught up on, oh, my stock, this stock's down and Verizon's not doing well and this is not doing well. You don't need to hit a lot of home runs. Okay, investing is not about home runs. It's about doing consistent. It should be boring. Investing should be like watching paint dry. There should be nothing exciting about it. You shouldn't even open up and be like, oh, it's up 
800%. You don't even want that because that same stock's going to be down 800% the next day. All right. It should just be boring, boring, boring. And dividend growth investing is boring. But at the end of the day is you want a million dollar portfolio, $2 million portfolio that's paying you 40000 to 80000 a year. Okay. And it's a nest egg. It's a pure nest egg because the companies are raising the prices as well. It's not just dependent on the, the, the stock market. The companies are still increasing their dividends. Okay. So that's the difference between dividend growth and index funds. Index funds depend on the, the stock market. Okay. So even if the stock market goes down, the companies are for the most part going to, as long as their particular business model isn't affected, they're going to keep paying your dividends or raising your dividends. So your income is going to stay the same. Stock market would eventually go up. But in the meantime, you have solid companies that are paying you. Okay. So how do you get started with dividend growth investing? Good question. Uh, a few weeks ago, I created a, a video called uh, how to get, buy your first five dividend stocks. Okay, so watch that, download that book, download this book. Uh, inside of this book, it has all my blue chip, my favorite blue chip stocks and things of that nature. So get that. Um, and that's basically it. You really just need to know the platform, right? I recommend Stash or Cash App, but mainly Stash. Get in there, open your account, pick five stocks, right? You want to pick uh, your index fund and then you want to pick a uh, uh, a monthly player, something that pays every month, and then uh, one stock from each of the, the different quarters, quarterly payments, right? So one from January, one from February, one from March. That's it, right? And I lay all that out there in both those books. You get there, and then you just do that. Set your amount, okay? Ten dollars a week across, you know, five stocks, so two dollars a week. Do that for six months, and you'll see, you'll see, you'll be like, oh wow, like I'm up, and I got paid, and dividends are coming in. And then you'll start adding more stocks, and you start adding more money. And then you'll have a nice little nest egg, okay? So, um, since dividend growth investing is boring, uh, income investing, I'm, I like the income invest, but every week I'm putting at least, every month I'm putting at least a thousand to not two thousand dollars into dividend growth investing stock. And I just put them in there and I don't, I, there's nothing to even look at really. Uh, income investing is more active, right? You're looking at stock market, or, okay, this one's down, let me grab that, that's more income, that's more income. You're looking at all the yields, uh, and it's exciting. This is more like a business. The dividend growth investing is just like it's almost like your own uh, Roth IRA that you're in charge of, okay. And then all this stuff, and uh, when you pass away, when you uh, when you pass this on to your kids, for the most part, now this might change with the tax laws, but for the most part, any capital appreciation you have it gets reset uh, to a higher level, right? So if you're up, you know, two hundred percent on your McDonald's stock. When it goes to your kid, it resets. Uh, the money is still the same, but it, they're at 0%. So then it starts growing from there because you pay the taxes on the capital appreciation. So if you know buy McDonald's at $50 and now it's $150, you owe taxes on that $100. If you pass away right now, as it stands now, your kid will turn it over and then their, their cost basis will be $150. So they don't owe any taxes right there. All right, so it's still another thing. So there's some tax benefits to the uh, dividend growth investing. Again, look into those. I'm not a tax professional um, and things are set to change, right? But that's just something you need to read about and get really smart on that stuff, right, for your estate planning. Anyway, don't let me ramble on on different things. Uh, so that's all I have right now. Uh, again, pick up the book. Um, I have a lot of different books out. My wife told me to put, uh, shout out more books that I have out. So, um, don't Gamble Retirement 5 is out, or I'm sorry, 6. Don't Gamble Retirement 6. And this is a 110-page book I have for free. So if I remember, I'll put the link down. So grab that. That has everything, uh, different business, royalties, cryptocurrencies, dividends, you know, financial mindset, retirement plan, everything in one, right? Uh, the biggest book on passive income is out. That's a 318-page. That's on Amazon. And it's 40 bucks, right? So I'm going to have that up for free on Amazon over the next two weeks. So I'll put that in my group because you want to get that for free, right? Because it's 40 bucks. Because it's so big that Amazon charges me for um, uploading it or for people downloading it. So at, even at $10, I'll be making negative money. So I had to put it up at this high price, right? But, you know, 318 chapters and each chapter has its own free book. I mean, it ends up being pretty, pretty good deal, okay? If you read a lot. If you can read through that book in part one and part two, I mean, you're going to be right where I'm at because it's literally everything I've learned, right? Uh, anyway, but anyway, so I won't hold you guys anymore. Um, 
yeah, dividend growth investing. It's it's a little, maybe the first couple months you might be learning about what it is, but once you learn what it is, you realize how simple it is, and you know that's how rich people get rich. They have all these companies, and you know their parents leave them Apple stock or uh, Microsoft stock, and you know there you go. And the the the, the kids are now rich, right? So it's not a bad thing. We got to do the same thing. We got to think like them if we want to be like them. Okay. So with that said, I'm out and I'll see you next week. Bye.